Welcome everybody to Whalejaw 3D. I am thrilled to have you here, fellow creators and makers. Today we'll be diving into the captivating world of 3D printing, where imagination meets tangible reality. So grab your digital chisels and let's sculpt something extraordinary. Before we even touch Blender, let's talk about inspiration. You know that feeling? That spot that ignites when you imagine an object taking shape in three dimensions. Maybe it's a sleek spaceship or an intricate jewellery piece or, well, as we'll explore today, a humble yet versatile box. Why start with a box? Because simply it's our secret weapon. Boxes are like Swiss army knives of 3D design. They hold treasures, organise chaos and look darn cool doing it. Plus, they're beginner friendly. Nobody ever said, I regret learning how to make a well-fitting box. And here's the twist. Our inspiration today comes from our sponsor, Whalejaw Customs. Everybody we asked agreed. Yeah, you I agree, man. I agree. I agree. Brother, I agree with you. I agree. Whalejaw Customs makes the sickest, trickiest boxes ever to grace Mother Earth. Store things like the squirrel you yearn to be. Whalejaw Customs, baby. The <laughs> you didn't know you needed. Whalejaw Customs. Hello, everybody. Let's open the blender then. Let's uh, make ourselves a really interesting, fun box. So the first thing I like to do is build a box that is the same size as the print area that your printer is going to use. Yeah. So if we create a cube like that, and using these three dimensions, we can basically change this size to the correct size. So what you're probably going to have to do is go to Google, check your dimensions here. Look, it's this printer that I'll be using in this episode. It's like amazing price kind of thing. It's cracking. I look, highly recommend. So. If we just input these dimensions into the box. See, the first issue that we're going to have is it's set in meters. So what we need to do here is go to this one here, this little scene one. And if we go to units, we can change it from meters to millimeters. Yeah, I, I work in millimeters. I come from a building site, so I like millimeters. So we can now enter the details. Yep. And there we go we have the print dimension of the Harlot Mage, yeah? 230 mil long, 128 mil wide, 228 mil high. Odd shape, but typically people print characters in it, don't they, so, like miniatures, so it's, it's good. I'd like a square one, but I feel like it's, the reason why they are this size is because they use screens, these resin printers, and obviously, like, I think it's like a 16.9 ratio, so you're always gonna get this, like, rectangle shape instead of a square printer, yeah? <clears throat> so now we have this. So what we can do is come in and on this one, if we press shift S and put the cursor to the selected, when we tap back out and right click, we can set the origin to the 3D cursor. So we can make this base actually the bottom. So if we press shift S again and then put the cursor back into the world origin there and then press shift S and put the selection to that cursor, <clears throat> we'll be sat on the base, on the floor, yeah? There you go, little hot tips before we get started. So now we have our box. We can basically turn that off for now. And we need to either gather reference images or we can use like free software. I'm a big fan of Blender Kit. I feel like you get lots of options kind of thing. So we want to build a box. And I don't know whether you've watched Wildjaw 3D, but there's a theme. There's also, it's, you could say there's a lore about this channel that it must be about cars. So, I want to make a box out of an alloy wheel. So, if we say type in car, we can see we have a selection of cars. That's a really cool car. Well done, buddy. Well done. And there's just a plethora of free things to choose from. Now, we've got a spicy vehicle here. I was hoping there'd be a Lamborghini or something. Should we click on this one? Let's give it a try. And obviously, all I want is a wheel. We don't even need the textures. Oh, it's a nice wheel though, I like it. So it's finally downloaded. <clears throat> Put it in cycles to have a quick view. We only want the wheel, which I'm pleased about because the car does actually look broken. I'm sure it's an easy fix, but... Jesus, look at the state of this model's model is insane. What is going on with this? Might want to restart this. 
I think we're going to start again because that model is an absolute piece of testament to online downloading for free. So start again. Try a new download from Mr. AMJVIS. Seems pretty decent at the moment, this one. But we know we just want the wheels, so this one, we can select the wheels, which is lovely. This time, I'm going to go the reverse way. I'm just going to delete things. I can see this model was fantastically built. Nice and simple. This is how a model should be. Well done, buddy. As we can see, we've got just wheels now. Lovely jubbly. I'm looking at them. They're actually good wheels. We need to make a box, and we've they're already filled in there. That's actually really handy. Our job may have been done for us. <laughs> we've saved a lot of time. I don't know. Probably could have modelled a wheel by now after all that faff. But we now have just three layers. That's all. That's lovely. That's exactly how we want it. And at the minute, they're in empties, aren't they? So what we do is we select them all, and then we press Alt and P, and we'll clear the parent. It's always handy to click Keep Transformation just to stop them moving around. Now they're free, we can get them out and put them in the normal box and we can delete all of this. There we go. So if we press undo, what's this one? This one's like some kind of, press alt pay, clear parent. There we go. And delete the hierarchy, we will be left with, oh, the joys of online downloads. So the rims, have we got modifiers on? We do, so if we just get rid of the mirrors, get rid of the mirrors. We have one tire, oh my God, that took so long. So step one, find reference, otherwise find a free model, because this is just a reference really on size and dimensions. It's a nice alloy wheel, it'll have to do. I don't know whether it's a real Audi alloy, but never mind, the brake needs work. But what we can do with this now is put it in a group, collection two, that one, that one, that one, and then we can delete. That one. There we go. New collection. It's always good to make a scene stuff one. So what we need to do now is select these here and put them in the middle basically. So selection to cursor. Has it worked? I can see all the origins are like incorrect. If we look like they've got one dot, one dot, one dot, they all need to be in the same place. So if we go for the tire and go into edit mode, select all of it and press shift S and put a cursor to the selected. So it puts it in the middle. We can go back out and then we can select everything again, right click and set the origin to the 3D cursor. So that when we then press shift S and put the Selection to the cursor which is no longer in the middle so we need to first go cursor to world origin and then shift s again and selection to cursor now our wheel goes to the middle Whee! and as we can see this wheel is far too big for our print area kind of thing this is why this box is handy so what we need to do is hmm why is forward yeah we need to now rotate the z 90 degrees don't we like that but i'm going to say minus because i want it to face the other way so i like my x to be this way we also need to rotate it the other way. Well, not necessarily. If we scale it down anyway, so it fits in the box. You could, in theory, print it like that, couldn't you? You could have an absolutely mahoosive one, but I've I've found with boxes, up to about 100 millimeter is like, it's enough. Like, if you're drinking out of a cup of tea mug, you know what I mean, an average mug, I think they're seven ounces, they're about 80 millimeters wide, you know what I mean? So if you're making a little trinket box, I'd say 100 mil is plenty, but you can go up to, obviously, as wide as that is, which would be like 230 mil, but do you really need a box that big? I'd like to try it, but for my six, I'm gonna rotate the X, or is it the Y, 90 degrees, and drop it on the deck like that, so that I can scale it within the bounds, you know what I mean? You just put the see-through mode on so you can see and we scale it, we've basically got the bed width, you know what I mean? And then you can actually think about how it's going to lay out with all the multiple pieces and everything that you're going to do. Yeah. And then when you export it, this is the main the reason we're doing this is so when we export it, it's exactly how big we want it, you know what I mean? Because if you knew what dimensions you were making, you could just then enter these dimensions into here, couldn't you not? Now we've done this, we can start thinking about making a box and doing some actual blender work. So we can get rid of this now, we can turn it off. If you press this one here, it just completely shuts the whole thing off the system. We're not going to need that for a long time. We've got ourselves a wheel, haven't we? And what we want to do is make the inside of that hollow so that we can put things in, don't we? The first thing we need to do is we need to optimize how much space we've got in it. As you can see, obviously on a car, that's where it should be. But realistically, we want to be using at least three quarters of that void space for the bottom half, you know what I mean? To just make the box useful, basically. And this is like the joy of a box. You've got to think about things when you're making them, you know what I mean? So if we bring this up, like say that much, that'd be ideal where we could put it. And that actually feels pretty good. We can 
see here we've got an issue with the caliper, can't we? And if we open up in edit mode, we can see that they're actually in the same layer. So what we need to do is unselect everything. And if you press L over an object like that one, it will select the whole object. So what we need to do is separate this caliper from this break disk so we can modify it. Make sure we grab every layer. If you press Alt Z, you can go into see through mode like that. And once we've selected everything, if you press P, you can separate the selection. So now we have a new layer up here. Look, rename it caliper. We now can modify this caliper. Obviously, that disc does look like a nice happy distance without wasting room. So this disc, can we just send it down? G and Z? What would happen if we put it there? See, it falls off here, so it's not going to work. So if we press the forward, the question mark button, we'll look at it. And we can see that's quite a tall item. If we now go into edit mode, select everything, scale it with the letter S and Z, we can probably crunch it down like that, can't we? Still looks like a break caliper. <laughs> <laughs> some say it's cheating, but I don't know. Now, we have we got some damaged artifact here? Mm, maybe. I think what's happened there is we've got merged vertices on here. That's something to always keep an eye on. So if we undo that, undo it again, undo, undo. We need to do the same, but this time turn this one off, auto merge. Because obviously they're quite, it's all, it's done. So we'll scale and Z, and we'll send it up again like that. We've got ourselves a nice flat caliper. Simple stuff. Now, if we press question mark again, we'll come out to here and we can actually move it down to where we want it, can't we? Which is probably about there, we'll see. If anything, should we hide this? If you press H on an item, you can hide it. Now, if we look at it, it looks like it's actually bang on in the middle. It's, that's actually pretty good, isn't it? That's pretty good. But what we need to think about is when we put this together, this is going to be like Lego. Now, something to, I've learned is, do I want to take a chunk out of that and stick it on this? Or do I want to take a chunk out of this? You know what I mean? I feel like I should take a chunk out of this this should realistically be lifted up just enough so that when I cut it out, it cuts everything, you know? So if we bring it up, say, to there, when we put a modifier on here, which is called a Boleyn, the most amazing modifier, it's also a computer killer, so get ready. It's You put it after your subdivision, that's always good to know. So we crank up our subdivisions on the caliper. If we go in here and crank this up, one, two, so we've got some smoothness. What we can now do on this Boleyn, on the difference, is click with the eyedropper and select the break. And once the name appears here, it means it's done and it's loaded. We can see we've had an issue, things have moved. Usually what this is, is to do with... I think what's happening here with this is there's too many objects within this break caliper, you know what I mean? So it's just getting confused, like, it'll go in and out, in and out, because there's like five different models, so... These are the issues you're going to run across when you're wanting to do these wacky ideas, you know what I mean? So we're probably going to want this one, and I feel like this one. That's probably what the issue is here, there's, there's two different objects, you know what I mean? So what we're going to do then, it's an interesting problem that needs fixing and might as well show you. What we're going to do is we're going to completely dismember this model. These two here are what's causing an issue, I think. So if I press P on the selection and separate them out of the model, if you press Alt and H, you can bring back what you've hidden. Now, these two models should be okay. It's this one that's interfering because it's intersecting so severely and then contacting the Bodeen. It's creating like an oddness, effectively. So if we back our edit mode now, and click on this one. What we need to do is add this to this model, you know what I mean? And what we may as well do is do the same for the top as well. So we separate that one, press L, P, and selection, and we separate that one. Now they're all their own individual objects. So now we've got them all in individual objects. Well, the first base piece is this one, isn't it? So can we union, combine messages? It's one of these two. So if we get rid of the collection and we switch to switch to object. We would like this one to union with this one. So if we click union like that. So if you turn this view back on as well and we select obviously the next piece and we turn it off we can see we've actually got the whole piece. I'm struggling to try and show it. Can you see look the old one's there we don't need it anymore because it's now merged with this one. We also need to do the same with the other ones don't we? So if we generate another boolean and we select number three it should add the top piece for us as well. Should. If we put is it a union? It is not. So now that's one solid piece probably need to do that with these as well. These really annoying things. If we open them up, I need to turn my clipping down as well. There we go. So if we select everything, 
make sure we're on individual origin. Scale the Z, we can like pump these up a little bit actually because they kind of need it. G and Z, press shift to slow it down, fine. And we should have some bolts kind of thing. Hopefully we not need to intersect these, but why not? If we go down to here, add another Berlin, and then select, is it that one? And then select Union as well. We can see, if we turn that off, we should have now just one visible object that's all one piece, yeah? So what we can do now is we can apply these balls, but what we need to pay attention to is the original that we was using has a subdivision surface on it. And when we apply these balls, these other layers have subdivision surfaces as well. So they will apply with those sub Ds. So if we don't apply this sub D first, everything else won't match basically. So if we apply our subdivision, we can then go in and apply each boolean. Might take a while, sit tight, have a cup of tea, but it's not bad. Apply the last one, and there we go. So now we have one object that if we press enter and look inside is a solid mesh kind of thing. It intersects with each other. There shouldn't be any insides on it, you know what I mean? And that's how you can join multiple objects together. That's probably a really handy tip, actually. I'm glad we went through that together. I'm sorry if it bored you, but the best way to learn is just make mistakes, you know what I mean? And I'm showing you the mistakes you're gonna make. Yeah, so if we press question mark, we can go back into this world and we can start where we left off, which was trying to Boolean this item onto this. So what we can probably do now as well is clean up all these made. If you create a new collection, if you like me, and you're scared of throwing away something you're gonna need later, just create a junk folder, collect up all the old stuff and just chuck it in it. And you can always come back to it later on. If you turn this button on like that, you can just save your scene trying to load all that data when you're not using them, you know what I mean? So now, if we select this one, and we go back to our favorite tool, which is Boleans. I love Boleans, it's so cool. You do so much with them. The infinite customizability, Billy. And as we can see, now we have a solid mesh. So in the end, we have a nice simple caliper that has been balled with the wheel. So if we now press question mark to individually view it, we can see we have our item balled. It also has these items on here which is interesting. These might actually be good for locating it and like sticking it on actually. We're gonna have to make them a little bit smaller, you know what I mean? I feel like we don't need to do that. Glue's better. <laughs> I'm a big glue guy, you know what I mean? This is what I've learned. Sorry trying to be fancy with all these like little clicky bits, but make it easier on yourself. So what we need to do is we need to make that flat, don't we? So if you remember, we've got the brake disc here. Let's re re it. We've got a brake disc, which is our real one. And then we've got our balls, which is just down here out of the way. And we just need a cheeky ball, which can go up here. We'll put it in the box. And we'll call it a brake disc, because it's not the brakes, it's the brake disc. And what we can do is we can turn it back on, click on it, and then go into edit mode. Press question mark so we can separate it out. We basically need to get rid of all those holes. And if we look, those holes don't actually go below. So what we potentially can do is we go up here we're gonna have to go through and do it individually in three if you press three so you get face mode you click on this one and then press Control and plus like that, like that, like that. you'll get to that amount we can then dissolve the faces maybe yes we can and it makes it flat for us that's perfect that's exactly what i want and what we can do now if we go into one mode and press m for merge we can merge them all at the center of that so that it turns back into just a normal vert this is how we're going to have to solve these. And what we could do is do multiple at once. So if we press Control and plus again, that one, two, three, three times, and then we press X and dissolve the faces, makes them flat. I don't know whether we're going to be able to merge it center, because it's going to do that, yeah. So what we're going to have to do is individually click them, merge it center, it's literally a two click thing, bang, 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 not me, bang, bang. And we should have now a flat surface there. We've got a couple more on it, it's like a game. Gotta shoot them all. And if we press question mark to go back out now, we can just inspect. I think we caught them all, didn't we? And we turn off this one just so we can see it. And we press Alt Z so we can actually see. I think we got them. No, we completely missed them. <laughs> it's not a problem though. If we rotate the Z, we can see it's not in the middle by any means, shape or form. Holy diver, that's off. So what we need to do is center these. 
<laughs> uh, downloading things off the internet. I love it. As we can see, they're not in the middle. So if we go click on them both and go into edit mode, select all, press shift S, cursor to the selected, it'll find the center. There's no way that's the center. So what we need to do is get a more accurate measure. You need to be aware of these things. Not really. So if we're going to two, and we select that ring there, and press shift S, cursor to select it, that's the true center. You know what I mean? Be observant. So what we can do now is go back out, we make sure we've both selected, right click, and set the origin to 3D cursor. That's our center now. So if we shift S, cursor to the world origin, and then shift S, selection to cursor, but keep the offset. We can now atone to our central placement, which is amazing. And then just move it down, obviously. Get back to where you want it, which was about there, want it. Check. Alt Z is your friend. Don't be scared to get into using it. We probably need to hide this, don't we? Because I can't see anything. Which one is it? That one. If we just bring these down a bit more, because we've got that balling to think about, haven't we? Yeah. So now we should be able to turn off the ball again. And if we click on this one, Alt Z, and check on it we can see we got one remaining well, that's probably because we need to rotate it's a hard knock life for me so we can now rotate the z hey this is why we don't want it and then we can just turn that bulb patch in awesome yeah all this crazy squiggly edge is because it's interfering if we now click and check we can see we still have one what Let's turn that one off if that don't make sense so then fast forwarded we've got this nipple problem what the problem is is this is going to get you, is we had the wrong ball selected. Always, that's why it's always good to call them ball to make sure that you're on the right thing. Yeah? So now, if we press Alt-Z, click this object, and press question mark, we can look. We now have a fitted brake caliber. When we print that, it'll fit snug to this brake disc here, which we don't want to see that one. Turn it off. Let me turn this one on. So when we actually sit it on our whip, on our brake desk, it's slightly, slightly protruding, you know, as you can see. We've given it room so it doesn't touch the bottom, you know what I mean? It guarantees it'll sit flush. We now have the first piece of our fancy box. So, so the first portion of our wheel assembly, this is the hardest bit, I promise you. We can see that brake disc needs filling in in the middle, don't we? So if we go in question mark mode and we go into edit mode, control Z so we can see, face mode press alt select a loop can we do it there we go this loop here if we press Control and plus to expand it we need to extrude it and then scale it down I really don't we and then what we need to do is select this ring here using alt extrude with a z let's give it a chunk for now then what we can do is press edge mode up with button two and start dropping in some edge creases you know what i mean because like we basically need to make a realistic break disc don't we so if we exit now into object mode and press question mark mode to check we can see it's it's still big lad so if we go in face mode select the ring and then press g and z we can bring that in so that it's within the boundaries that's pretty much within the boundaries isn't it how is that not in the center that wheel's that wheel's a bit wonky, lad. So the tire and the rim. Let's select the rim and the tire. These have never been in the middle. So we shift S and cursor to, well, selection to cursor. There we go. <laughs> the middle now. Oh, that will wreck my eyeballs. So now what we need to do is check. My calipers still don't hit. I think we're good. Now we've built our decorative part, which is our caliper and our brakes. We need to look at correcting this model here. Because if we look, it's kind of what we want, but it's, like, it's, it's also a mess. So we need to fix this model. Now, if you're following along, I'm probably going to chop it up because basically my bum is killing me. I've been sat here for an hour doing this. And we've gone through like many different problems, aren't we, of 3D printing. And this is what 3D printing is. There's a thousand little intricate problems you need to learn. And nobody wants to 3D model. Now, it's so easy if you know, I came from 3D animation and then I started like model printing. So I kind of like understood everything. I figured out everything quite easily. So if you just follow me along, all these problems will happen and we'll fix them together. So click part two press like on this one thank you and uh let's make some weird stuff did he just call us weird that's totally not cool bro that hurts my feelings hey Kevin, do we have a problem here 
Yeah, these little samosas watching need to like and subscribe so I don't feel stupid with no friends. <laughs>